ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. This is the May 15, 2015 meeting of the East Fishkill Town Board. This is, this is uh, typically is a workshop where the town board gets together to d discuss matters of importance to the town, but also tonight we're going to have a special uh, voting meeting for one resolution. We have an application been submitted for a concession at Red Wing, so that would be a special voting meeting. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then would you please also stand for a minute uh, in recognition of the men and women in law enforcement, the firefighters, and the volunteers that keep us safe who have lost their lives in line of duty recently. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You know, it's unfortunate lately we've seen too much of the bad news and so many of those people that keep us safe, uh, be it in law enforcement or the firefighters um, that have lost our lives. And really when I think about what they do and the duties they perform, I think we should all be very, very grateful for them and hope that they can come home safe every night. Um, I have a couple of announcements for this evening. Uh, first of all, oh, speaking of firefighters. I've received the um, annual report from uh, the Board of Fire Commissioners, or to the, from the Board of, Board of Fire Commissioners. This annual report is for the East Fishkill Volunteer Fire District, and it's put together by District Chief Kevin Geisen. And Kevin, Chief Geisen does a very good job. And just a little bit of a review of what our firefighters and first responders and ambulance people have done in 2014. Um, total alarms were 2,186. Mutual aid received as primary, primarily ALS and support for mobile life, 687. Mutual aid given to other departments, 73. Man hours for non-incident activities, 45,361. And man hours for fire alarms, 18,390. This is for the year of 2014. And I guess I got to tell you again, uh, our, our fire district is, they call it four companies, one family. They're all volunteers. And I got to just can't thank them enough for the things that they do and then the, the, the services they provide to the town. So uh, our hats off to our firefighters, our first responders, and our volunteers. And uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And the annual report really spells it out. I'd like to take, ch thank Chief Geisen for that report. Um, oh, I have a letter from Dutchess County. I forgot. If anybody was here, we had a, Dutchess County is going to be replacing the Palin Road Bridge. Uh, Dutchess County Engineering was here, I believe, was in February, and they gave a presentation on how the work was going to proceed. And it was to be a one-year project if they started in May. So we haven't seen the work started yet, so this is the recent letter I got. Uh, to let me know that they're going to be opening bids on the Palin Road Bridge Project this Friday, anticipating construction starting in July and August. Um, at the meeting that we had here previously, engineering had mentioned we may, as they call it, winter the project if necessary, and at this point, that's what they're going to plan to do. They intend to keep the bridge open as a one-way lane alternating on the northbound lane. So what they're going to be doing is for the winter time, once they take the southbound lane out of commission, they're going to have lights on the northbound lane to let you go either way. Um, so they're going to be doing that once they take the southbound lane out. And then in the springtime, when the weather breaks in the spring of 16, the contractor will come out, move traffic from the north lane to the southbound lane, again with the lights while they reconstruct the northbound lane and hopefully complete the project. So I just want to give everybody a heads up. Looks like they'll be starting in July and August. So I would assume they'll be taking the southbound lane out quickly and uh, we will be seeing the, light, the traffic lights going up. So everybody who uses Palin Road Bridge, just be warned that this is going to be coming. All right, just wanted to make that note. And on another note, I noticed DOT has been making some mention of doing the uh, bridge down there on Route 82, the temporary bridge and they're thinking of doing that also. So we did send them a reminder that the county's going to be doing their bridge. Please do not do both bridges at the same time. 
and they emailed back and thanked us for that little bit of advice. So we'll see what happens. But Palin Road Bridge will be starting construction in the July, August time frame. Um, one other thing I'd just like to mention that we get a lot of calls on this, the uh, highway sweeping. How are we doing with the sweeping? Uh, we have approximately 200, uh, 200 miles of town road and uh, we get calls all the time about the sweepers. This has been a very, very tough winter as everybody knows it's warm today, but gee, it was, seemed like just about a month ago there was still snow on the ground. Uh, because of the uh, issues getting salt, we ended up using more sand with our salt mix because we were running out of salt towards the end of the winter. The state was not releasing salt to the municipalities. And so we have more sand on the roads now than we would normally have in this time of year. That being said, it's taking longer for our sweepers to pick up. And Peter, you're the liaison to the highway department. Have you gotten any uh, idea how the sweepers are doing? Yeah, I got an update. I spoke to Dennis today and I got a letter from someone else. Uh, usually, right now they're sweeping every day with two or three sweepers, about three quarters of the way done. Uh, usually over the past few years, he's been starting at the end of February uh, with sweeping, and after that they only salt in the roads that they do get to sweep early. Uh, the last two years, because of the severe winters, um, this year they're well behind because 3D, who also snow plows for us, is the people that own the sweepers. So the mechanics um, were actually plowing. So because of the severity of the winter, they're about 30 days behind. Wow. Um, and just so people know, they actually rotate where they start each year. One year they start <coughs> in Hillside Lake. The next year they start on Stormbow Mountain. So that's why they're really behind. Um, and there's a lot more sand on the roads because of the, the severity winter. of the winter. So they're out with there, all though. luck, yeah. Should be done in about a month, he said. Okay. And just, uh, we've all been a little bit impatient, and I know they just did my road uh, two days ago. So they are out there, they are sweeping. Please be patient because this was a tough winter, and uh, we, are, we are sweeping. We're just a little bit behind, so. We're almost to Route 82. Just short of Route 82 oh, going good. this way. Okay, good to hear. So. How, uh, how much of the town did, he, did you have a percentage of the town? About three quarters done, 75 percent complete. Okay, all righty, sounds good. So hopefully the sweepers will be winding up pretty quickly. Um, that's about all the uh, reports for tonight, the announcements for tonight. Uh, I'd like to uh, open the special voting meeting. Do I have a motion to open the special voting meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. The special voting meeting is now open. Uh, we have a special voting meeting tonight because we have put out bids for, for uh, concessions for the uh, Route 52 complex, for the main complex, and for Red Wing Park. Uh, we had not received any, any concession bids for Red Wing Park, and we just recently received one, and they would like to get started because I believe they'll be opening a Memorial, Memorial Weekend. So we did get this grant. The I think everybody's got a copy. This is the only person, this is the only company to bid on this grant, on this grant, I'm sorry, bid on this uh, proposal, on this concession. And uh, it's from a company named MSCB Management. And they're asking to lease the concession stand at Red Wing Park. And they give a little description. They also give their insurance, I believe. They give a little description of their menu and all that. And as being as they are the only bidder, do I have a motion to grant the concession facility use for privileges to this company, M MSCB Management? Uh, the uh, payment to the town will be $500 of, for this concession. Any discussion? Nope. Everybody okay with MSCB? All right, do I have a motion to uh, Award the concession facility uh, to MSBC Management LLC. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, now, do I have a motion to close a special voting meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The special voting meeting is now closed. And I'd just like to thank Clerk Hooray for coming in for that one vote tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Carol. Thank Darryl. you, Clerk. I think we should have held it off to the end. Uh, yeah, we, we should have right, next done time that. to the end, right. We might have to reopen the meeting. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. 
All right. Uh, we have the work session will now begin. Uh, we have a couple, uh, five items for discussion tonight. The first one is police staffing. And I see we have our chief of police, Kevin Keefe, here, and Lieutenant Matarcino. Would you gentlemen like to come up? We'll talk a little bit about our police staffing. I believe that uh, the town board has gotten a letter from our East Fishkill Police Department regarding the uh, void, this is what we call void in the shift supervision due to a long-term injury of one of our sergeants who's out with a back injury. He's been out, uh, did not think it was gonna be this long. It's been extended, but uh, I th we've received this letter. So if you gentlemen would just like to explain to us a little bit about this void in the rotation, the management, Okay, what happens with, with uh, the sergeant that's out? Pull the... Oh, there we are. Uh, what's, what's occurred with the sergeant who's out on injury is uh, his shift is typically the relief shift. So he's, he covers the vacancies when the other sergeants are on their regular days off. Um, with him being out, uh, we have gaps in supervision. Uh, and generally, we've been paying uh, by contract an officer, an officer to uh, uh, receive acting sergeant's pay. And basically, okay. he, can, he makes... Um, some of the more minor decisions, but he doesn't have any disciplinary authority. Okay. When you say uh, they get actually out of title pay. It's out of title pay. So is what uh, it is. a patrolman will get out of title pay while he's filling in technically for that sergeant. Right. Okay. So, so we are uh, doling out some money in that respect, but he doesn't have the authority. He also can't do the paperwork for the sergeant. So our remaining sergeants are being uh, uh, given additional paperwork to cover for the, the absent sergeant. So it's tying them up in the office longer, and I, I'd really like to get them out on the road more uh, and put the workload back uh, among four sergeants. Mm -hmm. So so we were asking for uh, to promote a, uh, an, a sergeant from the active list, and because uh, the uncertainty of, uh, of the uh, sergeant that's on injury, he has to go through surgery. We don't know what the recovery going, time would be. Yeah, going for back surgery, so right. that could be a lengthy process. Um, on the list, I believe uh, we discussed one of the officers that was on the list was... Uh, we have three candidates. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we have one that, uh, that we feel is probably going to be the most suited, but we need to speak to all three of them on our, okay. On our level. Okay, that sounds and, uh, good. But um, certainly we didn't expect this injury to be as, as significant as it turned out to be. That's I know correct. originally it didn't seem like it was going to be a problem, but now it's obviously turned into quite a situation. So, uh, and I would agree that having three sergeants, uh, typically we have four sergeants, and we've seen this actually with our detective division where we didn't have like uh, one, one detective who was the, it, the, the authority, didn't have the authority to be right. the uh, supervisor. He was the acting supervisor kind of detective. It can create a kind of an issue in, in right. uh, operations of the uh, of the staff so what would now the cost between a patrolman and and a sergeant is approximately eight thousand dollars a year i believe is correct eight, eight thousand three hundred a year but if we're paying somebody out of title we're paying a good chunk of that already basically so. that's getting paid out already correct so okay um i think it's i i do think it's a, a, a position that needs to be filled especially with the circumstances, and we're getting to a very busy time of year. So I don't know how the rest of the board feels. What I'd like to do is arrange for uh, interviews uh, for possibly in the next couple weeks. But I'll just get the board's feeling on this. Any thoughts, questions? Uh, is there a timetable as to when the, the injured sergeant will be back? We have no timetable. We're going by doctor's note by doctor's note, and so far, Matt, what's the? The last note was July 8th but I believe that surgery was being planned in the interim. We hope. Okay. That could be extended and even further. How many people does the one sergeant oversee currently? Um, five, five, correct? Five. Well, four. Four. It's himself and four to a squad. But he rotates, he, he supervises just about everybody <laughs> because he's the relief sergeant, so he sees every single officer. So. How are, your, how are your, your sergeants do their shifts? Um, you have a day sergeant, uh, evening sergeant, then you have this sergeant that's out on, out with a back injury. He was like rotating. He sergeant. rotates. He does, yeah. uh, um, depending on the, the week, because they work a 4 2 4 2 5 two schedule, he'll either work uh, two days, two evenings, or three days and two evenings and cover the vacancies for okay. uh, the day and evening sergeants. 
Yes. And so what do we have now? We have four sergeants, uh, three sergeants well, three now, working. down to three. Right. So where do your sergeants work now? Right now we have a day, an evening, and a midnight sergeant. Oh, and a midnight sergeant. So, and then the other one just kind of does the rotation. Yeah, we've used yeah we've used the senior officer concept on midnights, and that's worked out kind of well because it's a it's a it's a fixed uh, squad, so yeah. you have the same people working that midnight shift all the time, so it's a little more manageable yes. than trying to manage different people coming on different shifts. I mean, it's a tough shift. Yes. No. Chief, so. will this be an interim position, or is it going to be permanent? <coughs> and um, what will happen once the recovering uh, sergeant comes back? Well, well we've discussed the, the structure of the police department. We'd like to take a look at it, because we still have an open lieutenant's position, too. So we're right now operating with one lieutenant and a detective sergeant. So we're still kind of short of that. We've actually operating rather shorthanded management-wise, and I'd like to sit down and talk with the uh, chief a little bit more about different structuring to make sure the work is spread out a little bit more. And I think in the end, what I'd like to do is see the sergeants out on the road also. Right, we've discussed that. So be more that. of a hands-on because of the paperwork that they're doing. Um, and it's just my thought that um, if he comes back, that we will at some point have to fill that lieutenant's position that we're just kind of bumping along without now. We're trying to, for budget reasons, we're trying to be very careful about all these right. appointments. <coughs> so, so by civil service purposes, it would be a permanent appointment. That's so. true. Civil service would, would, would require it. Yeah. So the schedule you says a 4-2-4-2-5-2. Correct. And that's the sergeants or the that's men to everybody? That's the board. That's everyone. Okay, so when now the, the relief sergeant isn't there, now we promote a new sergeant the days that he's not there we're still going to be giving out a title pay to somebody yeah that's contractual but those days okay. will be a lot fewer because right, we'll okay. have that sergeant. understood just want to make sure right. that's always covered by one particular individual or is it um it's usually it's based either on a senior individual or um the more qualified individual it, it varies depending on their their skill set so you're still so. basically paying for a sergeant Correct. No They're what. still getting the sergeant pay mm -hmm. rate. It's so. And who decides that before the shift? The lieutenant? Um, generally, it's the, in most cases, it's the most senior man. In some cases, uh, we have other people that step up that are more qualified. So it's not always a senior man, but in most cases, it is. Thank you. Okay. Thoughts? No, I think what's it's. A, what's the difference in pay right now, Mark? What, if, like, we're paying out of title? We're paying. Yeah, I mean, the, we're paying essentially that 8300 on an hourly. We're paying the 8, basis. We're basi it's basically a wash financial. Correct. Now, if we go to five sergeants for now, are we going to get in trouble back when we go to union negotiations? And they're going to sit there and say, no, we want five sergeants permanent. No. Uh, well, I would hope not. I mean, my thought on that is that this is only good I know what point. my thought is. And That's I know what a your good point. Is I don't believe they can yeah. mandate us. And speak to Mr. Wood. I don't believe they can mandate us well, to fill those. I think if you're going to go ahead with this, we're going to sign off from the union. Could sign off from the union that they understand that the sergeant is out for whatever reason. I mean, um, we can't. No, I mean, I understand that we can't. We actually have two issues because you have a civil service issue. Because mm -hmm. uh, once you promote somebody. Yeah. But if you, you could do a temporary appointment, <coughs> and then we'll have to get a sign off from the union under the circumstances. Okay. Chief, rather than we'll take a look into that, yep. rather than creating another job, is it possible to have the rest of uh, the three sergeants active to share it, uh, the overtime rather well, than give it to somebody else? In, in overtime, we calculated this out, and in overtime, you would end up spending. I mean, we're talking about a few months. Oh, if hopefully a few months. Right. Yeah, we don't. Uh, we don't really know. Um, but without, if you were just to cover those, that sergeant's position in overtime with another sergeant, it'd be over eleven thousand dollars to do that versus eight thousand and change to uh, just do a promotion. So. And if we are, our long-term goals are to replace the lieutenant. <clears throat> As we've discussed in the past, I guess it would be appropriate now have it a little could, bit of savings. It could be. Well, why don't we take a look at this? We'll have to look at the union aspects. Tom, will you take a look at the union contract and see if we have to? We would have to reach out to the union and get their thoughts well, I on it. I definitely want to have yeah. sign-offs so that they don't try to make yeah, a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, and uh, but what I do think that we should make this uh, have somebody filling this position. So I want to talk about how we're going to go about doing that. Okay. All right. Also, also I, I, the lists are they expiring? The sergeant or lieutenant's list are they expiring soon? Oh, the civil service list. Yeah. The, the current the list that currently exists. Um, there's a new sergeant's test coming up at the end of the week. When that list is established in a couple of months, then that would terminate the current list. Right, 60, 90 days, yeah. right. something like that. So that's just the sergeant's list. What about the lieutenant's list? Uh, lieutenant's has a little bit longer life. Their test doesn't come back Expires until in November. In November. Okay. All right. So, so let's see what we can do about the staffing, Tom. If we'll look into this with the PBA, see if we can get a sign off from them on that, and see okay. if this should be. Also, we have to see about the sergeant that's out right now, and see how things progress with his injury. Okay. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So we'll play by ear and we'll touch base and see, uh, see and also we have to check with civil service. Okay. Take a look at that. So, alrighty, but right. I would like to get a sergeant on duty because I think that right now just working with the three sergeants, not having the rotating sergeant is kind of problematic because the sergeants are, as you said, tied up doing more paperwork and not out, you know, doing right. what they should be doing. That was the low man on the totem pole, the rotating? Uh, no, actually, once uh, if we establish another sergeant, we, they would go back. They bid their shifts every year, <clears throat> so they would rebid their shifts uh, once we promote someone, and then they, based on seniority, they get their picked shifts. So I don't Alrighty. expect too much to change. But yeah. any other questions? We good? Let's see, we come up with uh, with the PBA and with the civil service, and we'll get back to you, gentlemen. Okay. Great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. All right, next on the uh, discussion would be, we have a request from the Route 52 Golf Center. Our Rec Director, Bill Green, is here. Bill, would you come on up, talk about this a little bit? <coughs> uh, the Route 52 uh, Golf Center is basically a uh, driving range, miniature golf, um, batting cages, that sort of a thing, and I checked, it was- And a dome. And a dome, yep. And it was actually allowed by special permit enacted in 1996, please, 194-56, I want to say, something like that, that, right. that allowed that to happen. <laughs> um, the problem is they wanted to do other sports things there, but because of the special permit that was enacted back then, it's very specific. I think they were only allowed just what they have there is the batting cages, the driving range, and they would like to expand. And we just got this letter. That's why it's on, the, on everybody's table today. They requested to convert the existing facility to a softball complex for games and weekend tournaments. They're gonna keep the, the existing dome there and use that for a training facility for the Empire State Huskies. Uh, they'd have parking lots on the front of the property next to Route 52 and the existing lot, plus, thus giving us an additional buffer zone and they would keep the dome, the pro shop, and the mini golf. And they gave a little rendering about what they're proposing there. It's kind of difficult to see, but you see Route 52 is in the bottom. You can still see the existing dome is there somewhat in the center and then they have fields in the, in the driving range and one in the, and two in the front there. So uh, this is their, their request. Um, and Bill and I sat down with them. They asked if we would sit down and talk about it a little bit. And uh, I just wanted to see if the board saw we'd have to actually have to change the law that allows this to happen. I guess we would amend the special per the allowances in that special permit would be one way to do it. And uh, just want to throw it out there and see what the board thought that it would be a, be a viable uh, use for this property. So, well, um, Bill and I have discussed this uh, before, and uh, we both agree that one of the main things that East Fishkill needs are basketball facilities. Mm -hmm. That's probably the number one thing. And if the uh, yeah. Tottenham Hotspur deal goes through, um, the other thing we're gonna need are soccer fields. Now, I don't wanna get in the way of um, this gentleman's business model. If he thinks this is gonna work, then, then great. Because other opportunities can open up from this as well. Mm -hmm. If we can move all the girls over into this one complex, that opens up field two and field five, I believe. Oh no, I'm sorry, field six. Or just field two is all softball. Two. Yeah. yeah. Six is softball also. Yeah. And okay. this way we can have more tournaments, not only here, but then we can have far more tournaments here on the rec fields, yeah, which would be good. But this is private. This is private, but I'm sure that we can <coughs> yeah. get some sort of uh, 
hometown discount. We have a, we'd have to have an agreement with them as right. far as our because our, this is going to be a, a softball. Our facility. sports, yes, yes. The other dome is going to be basically baseball. So, and this gentleman said they have worked together, and they're not competing with each other. And I've mentioned over and over again, this is great, but we need a gym. Yeah, yeah. We need a facility for volleyball, for basketball, for indoor activities. The dome that is there <coughs> will be used for a, a, more like a practice facility for uh, the softball. So it's going to be basically a softball facility. Bill, but do you know the age group that they're talking about, the, um, the Empire State Huskies? I think they're talking uh, 12 to 14 <coughs> somewhere. Because that field inside the dome will be a band box. They'll be no. That's not. That's just to do. Um, just to do workout. training. Work workout stuff. Training. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't think they'll they, probably set Tom's up and do something like right. that. Yeah, pitching machines. Pitching in machines. There. They're doing it now. Breland Edwards. They, they they do softball instruction there now. They've been doing it. Hmm. For it's, years. The only unfortunate thing about this is that it's going to be seasonal. Be very seasonal. Yeah. yeah that's that's, stuff. Whereas the the dome is going to be year round and. Yeah. Like well, we were talking I, about I, that, I think but training is year round. Yeah. Training, training is year round, but it's, you're very limited because right. that's a small dome comparatively. I think these gentlemen realized after talking with us that the need for an indoor facility, for example, basketball could be used seven days a week around the clock just from what's going on in Brewster and neighboring things. And I, my feeling is they'd like to get this down because the two gentlemen I spoke to are really into softball, but they were very much uh, aware of the need for basketball. And they do have the acreage there. So I think they'd know then that the dome would be year round. As you said, this is seasonal. Yes. This is also bad weather. It's not, you know, you get three days of rain, which we haven't had in a long time. They're not going to be able to play there either. So. Right. But remember, they originally were looking for the dome that went down the road. They do want to put right. a sports facility there. And he th he's going to keep the miniature golf, and I think he said the batting cages, which they're going to fix. Yeah, the, right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Fixing. yeah. Okay, um, I have no problem with it myself. I, I would like to see if they would consider building a indoor yeah. basketball facility there. Yeah. I think that would be really a home run for. They'll for beat the us town. to build it, I guess. Right? Well, it could be. It could be. We could uh, maybe we could enter into a long-term yeah. lease or something like that. I but don't they know. did say that they would cooperate with the town and yeah. work together with us so okay. well, the amount of fields that they're suggesting they're obviously going to have tournaments mm -hmm. and tournaments are going to bring in a lot of revenue okay town, so yep. that's encouraging yeah they said the restaurants the gas stations hotels and will all prosper from this being built there okay we have one hotel that's one oh, on the corner we of may get a new yeah, one now I, with, I hope with the so. other dome yeah, yeah. You know? I hope so. <laughs> to make you sound fun. It, I, yeah. They didn't mention a hockey rink, though, I don't think. No, they, no, they didn't mention they hockey. <laughs> so, all right. I mean, <coughs> it, it appears to me that there might be a need for softball, and that it could relieve some of the, some of the uh, use of our fields, because our fields. As long as it'll be. <clears throat> yeah. As long as it'll be. It's not too much of a financial burden for the softball. Yeah. Well, we'd have to talk to them about uh, what the rates would be for town teams. Mm -hmm and uh, maybe set something up in that respect. So. Tom, was it turf? I don't recall. Did you, the field's going to be turf? Uh, in the dome? No, no. The app, this, this. I, um, I don't know. I don't he think didn't. he mentioned that. No, I think they're just going to do fields. I right? know the dome of 52, that's going to be turf. Yeah, yeah. If it's yeah. then I'm sure they're going to have their own staff maintaining the fields. Yeah. That's, that's big, a lot of fields to maintain. Big expense. Yeah, yeah it was about nine of them, maybe, right? Eleven. Oh, Eleven. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, so, right. uh, um, well, we'd have to add the use to the. Well, that's what I was going to ask Tom if we wanted to uh, change the zoning ordinance that allowed this to happen, a special permit in a B1 zone. Um, <coughs> could we just amend that that zoning ordinance, Tom, mm -hmm. to allow? Because, like I said, it's very restrictive. But it's certainly you could see it was really just you know to allow this to happen. So we could allow with certain setbacks. Right, this goes through the process. Yeah. Okay, but it can be done. That would probably be the best, the best way to, to approach this. Okay. Well, didn't that Ed Pilati come once to us before, a couple of years ago? Uh, a senior campus assisted or something? Assisted living. It was the yeah, assisted living. Yeah, that would have living. been a home. Oh, I thought that would have been a terrific yeah. thing. We amended the law, and then uh, that was it. Right. So I'm a little hesitant with this, but the, uh, the people seem very interested so i think they should make the application and uh see how it goes okay 
All right, any questions, any thoughts? Any other questions? We'll, we'll call Ed and uh, tell him to make a formal application to amend it. I guess he would, the, the applicant would make the application to change the law, and he'd have to give us uh, some information on the uses, a little bit more detailed than what he's provided us here. Okay. All righty, sounds good. Would you give Ed a call tomorrow, Bill? Sure. And tell him that we would, we would certainly consider it, but he's going to have to make an application. Go to the planning? Uh, well, that would be planning, Tom. Uh, or town, that would be town board through through Carol for the uh, to to the amend the ordinance goes to be, Carol, for Carol. The town clerk, then you'll refer to the planning no, board for, for their review. Yeah. And it comes okay. back to yes, I think they saw Pim already about something. <coughs> That's why I thought they it's did. The planning board. Yeah. 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 But if they come to Carol, they'll come for our board, and we'll refer it over to planning board. Then they'll give us back their comments. So to give them buzz tomorrow. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, that's a tough one right there. That's uh, traffic is an issue there, but let's see how it goes. Okay, great. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate Thanks, you coming Thanks, out. Bill. Take care. Take care, Bill. All right. Number three on the discussion for the evening is our Securities and Exchange Commission annual disclosure. Mark, would you like to tell us a little bit about this? We were, we were uh, reached out to by our bond council and. Right. The SEC requires that we file uh, disclosure documents, financial information, every time we issue um, debt. And additionally, we file an annual disclosure um, statement. So we're doing all that already, but what we want to do here, as required by the SEC, is to establish a formal policy, mm -hmm. um, essentially um, stipulating exactly who will be involved in those disclosures and how it will all take place. So the document that you have is a first run that was produced by our bond council. Um, since he produced this and since it was disseminated, I've had discussions with our financial advisor and bond council, and we think we can streamline this some, you know, okay. turn it from 13 pages down to six or so. So it's a work in progress, but we wanted to get the idea and the concept to the board now so that you have um, a chance to also comment while we're in the middle of this process. Mm -hmm. And this is a federal uh, disclosure, re this is a federal requirement, it's regulatory requirement, so it's not like there's any ifs, ands, or buts about it. This Correct. is what we do. Yeah. And we just have to fill out this. Is this a new disclosure form or is there something no, new? No, this is just a policy. No, oh, this is a policy that right? they we've told all, We've been doing the disclosures right. all along, but this, uh, so now we'll have a formal how the town is going to ensure that oh, okay. the disclosures So we'll have happen. a formal policy right. in place. We'll have a formal policy okay. to govern what we're doing now, but doing now without a formal policy. Okay. So. Okay. Questions? That was pretty quick. No yeah. questions. Works very thorough. Yeah. All righty. Uh, number four is our capital project list. You know, we talk a little bit about drainage and other projects, and um, the highway superintendent and the town engineer actually put together a uh, capital projects list. Also, they made some notes about the paving, and obviously when it comes to the paving, we know that we're, we're trying to get back up to the uh, amount that we need to spend on paving uh, because with the recent recession and uh, and the 2% tax cap that the governor has imposed upon has been very difficult, but uh, little by little we're bringing our paving budget up to where it needs to be. Unfortunately, this year with the, with the terrible winter, we're going to have to reexamine our paving budget for this year because um, our, our snow budget is eating into our paving budget, I'll put it that way. So what we're going to be doing is taking a hard look at the paving projects we're going to be doing this year. One of the paving projects we will be doing, which we know needs to be done, is going to be Lake Walton Road. Lake Walton Road is in dire need of repaving. And instead of repaving the whole road, which would probably cost us about $500,000, uh, our town engineer and our highway superintendent been out, they've done test boring. And what we're really planning to do for Lake Walton Road is because the crown seems to be in decent shape, we're going to be milling the, the edges, I think, what's got four feet in on each edge? Plus or minus. Plus or minus four feet. And then uh, be paving behind that. So we're going to keep the crown, which is in decent shape, but just milling 
and, uh, and, and paving those four feet. And we think we could probably do the job for about $350,000. It would be about half. Yeah. It's closer probably to about six and a quarter to do the whole thing okay. conventionally. And we're thinking about three and a quarter if okay. we mill and fill. Okay. So uh, that's what we'll be looking at. And I asked the highway superintendent to look very, very closely at other roads he would like to pave this year because unfortunately, again, the snow plowing budget has eaten into our paving budget and uh, we need to make sure we have enough money to be removing snow this winter in the months of October, November, December. So it's been a little bit difficult, but overall, as we go year by year, we are building up to where we need to be. Now, this list of cap proposed capital projects, um, I don't know what we're going to get to this year because, as I said, of the difficult winter, but it's something I'd like to ask the town board to take a look at. Um, this is this not prioritized. It is just a list um, of, of problem areas in the town that need to, and some of the maintenance work that needs to be done. And uh, the total for this is $4 million. What I would propose to the engineer, the controller, and the town board is that we and we be thinking about the 2016 budget about setting aside a certain amount of money each year and each year take take over a few of these projects and get them done but that's why they need to be prioritized what everybody thinks would be you know something actually needs to be done and when you look to prioritize this budget uh, these projects you know certainly speak with uh, Scott or speak with the highway superintendent to give you any any background or any ideas on these um, Sylvan Lake, Old Sylvan Lake Road box culvert, Old State Road culvert extension. There's quite a list here, and again, it's not prioritized. Long Hill Dam, I will just say we do not own the Long Hill Dam, but uh, that was included in the hazard mitigation pl plan because we noticed that it could be a hazard. And uh, we do also send our people up there in, in the event of a heavy storm. We always keep an eye on it and pump it down when the lake up there gets too full. Um, Carroll, Carroll Drive bridge replacement is something we've discussed. That's on our hazard mitigation plan. We've actually made a grant application to replace the Carroll, Ride, Carroll Drive bridge. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And there's a lot of them all the way down to a, a culvert trash rack for $15,000. So it really does run the gamut of, of projects. But I think it's pretty, pretty inclusive of uh, what we need to be getting done. And, and I would like to add that this uh, does not include the smaller projects that highway performs themselves. These, these are projects that we would typically give out to a contractor. Yeah, well, good point. So in addition to this, highway is <laughs> yeah. doing projects highway does of a, some sort almost every day. Yeah, we have, we have a catch basin crew that's out every day doing the smaller projects. So good point. So that's, uh, that's our list. And I don't know if anybody has any questions, but please take a look at it and certainly we'll discuss it. I would like to start setting aside next, for next year's budget, the 16 budget, to start knocking down some of these projects. Uh, the bigger ones are gonna take a little looking at, but uh, certainly we can start whittling this list down. So. Scott, uh, yeah. I know we spoke about this uh, recently uh, with the MS4 coordinator also present at the time. Uh, we did uh, agree that there was uh, a need uh, to address drainage in certain parts of the town. And I remember that I, I had asked if we could have a priority list, what's more important, or what's in, at this time, in, in need, prioritizing over the rest. Is it possible for us to have that list? Well, I think what the supervisor said, I think we all need to together, collaboratively, agree on a priority. I don't know, yeah, this is the list, but I don't know that Well, I should just set the priority of project because there's, there's a lot that goes into well, that. The priority, I guess, would be, since you're the town engineer and the MS4 coordinator, will be putting together, I mean, you guys work on this year, uh, year round. The board, we don't go and inspect all the catch basins and whatever right, right. problems we have. Right. So uh, I, I would expect that in that respect that you put that list together for us to really look at and say, okay, these are the really four or five this year that we really need to look at. I know that this is a long list, but if I, uh, I mean, we, you and I went on some of this and inspected mm -hmm. myself, if I had to say uh, of the ones that you and I went to look at what needs to be done, certainly for whatever I inspected, I could tell. But since you deal with this on a, on a daily basis, yes. that's why I ask you to create a list for us to look at 
Looking at this long list, probably every one of these needs attention. But everyone does, yes. Right. But based yeah. on the need of money that we need to put together, right. we can really do all of them. Yeah, I think there's something that needs to be considered if do you do one project for a half a million? Or do you do five projects at a hundred thousand yep. different parts of the town? So I mean I can try to gate it grade it in terms of, of urgency, but well, they're, they're different in nature, and, and, I, and again, the budget. I would offer just do one project, or we're going to try to right, do you're going to have five small rankings. projects. You're so I think yeah. we so need very, to. You're going to have money. Yeah. So there yeah. Be discuss it. Per it. I think that in that case, then Peter, because you're the uh, liaison on the highway department, okay. would you like to be involved in prioritizing this? Yeah, we can, but yeah. I got to agree that we got to figure out realistically what we think we can spend a year. What we mm -hmm. can spend, yeah. Yeah. Like if we're going to spend three million a year, then oh. we're not worried. But if we're going to budget ourselves to no. a million a year, <laughs> the controller, million, I would the controller say, just you know, said no. I would I say mean, the perfect, for, you know, yeah. In a perfect world, half these projects should be done. Two million dollars should be done now. Yeah. In a perfect but world. The thing is, do we have two million dollars? Well, Ask the controller. No. 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 <laughs> do I have a million dollars? Well, Peter, you know the fact that we don't have two million dollars. I mean, that's why. Uh, uh, the budget needs to be looked at. Unfortunately, right. we do not participate in the creation of a budget, so we do not know where the mon money is funded for. But uh, uh, I think the board is responsible as a whole to really allocate funds where they're needed. Uh, are we going to pull $4 million all of a sudden? We do not have it. But I think that looking at the whole budget and seeing where the funds are going, really we could start probably putting some money aside <coughs> because, uh, as I said, I've looked at a couple of projects with a town engineer and uh, it's pretty bad out there. I mean, if we get hit with a really bad uh, rainy season, we're going to have problems. So well, uh, I, I, it's I, important, I, it's important really uh, to look at the whole pictures because many times we're talking about uh, this guy uh, needs uh, money here, or that guy needs money there, but I think it's extremely important to prioritize. And the roads mm -hmm. are in bad shape, and we haven't done much uh, uh, repairs in the last few years, so. Uh, what, I, what the supervisor and I have been discussing is to establish by legislation a, a five-year plan and to prioritize these lists and put it in, because every year when the town board approves the budget, uh, usually in the highway fund is between drainage and paving is probably 750 to a million dollars. 800, yeah. 800,000 yep. uh, to, uh, to pay as you go for these yep. things. So many towns uh, formally adopt a five-year plan. That's, That's what, what we're, we're talking, talking about, John, yep. the other day. And then this would be the basis of the beginning is to take this list. The law would provide some criteria which would be involved with uh, danger and risk mm -hmm. and things like that. And then at least every year that 200, 250,000 of your budget that you already have, yeah. well, the, the drainage projects, um, could now you have a, a program going that you, yeah, you know right. what you're gonna do. It just formalizes it and actually, right. um, you know, we, as I said, we will be doing the 2016 budget soon. We should have a set aside for some of these projects. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll be doing is over the next few years, uh, you know, getting willing this down as best we can obviously some of the bigger projects are going to take some uh probably different kind of financing we'll have to see how that goes but uh i have no problem i mean i know a lot of these projects i've seen a lot of these roads and and i know with the problems with them i would sit down with uh town engineer with the with the highway superintendent we'll go over this this is the list and we can prioritize that i have no problem with that um, I've worked in the highway many years myself, and I know a lot of these oh, a lot of these issues, so that would be no problem. So what we'll do is uh, we'll, s we'll sit down, and over the next uh, few weeks, we'll put together a uh, priority and see what the priorities are. Again, realize that some of these projects are very large, and uh, but we do have grant applications in for two of them, so hopefully we'll be able to get some federal funding through our hazard mitigation grant to take grant to take care of some of those. The smaller ones, we'll see what we can do. We'll put together a priority list, but at least everybody has a list. And uh, we'll, we'll put it together. So at least we'll have a plan over the next five or six years. We'll start working this down a little bit. Mark, uh, 
uh, we allocate about eight hundred thousand. You said to the for uh, repairs and uh, repaving. It's eight hundred fifty thousand for paving and associated drainage projects, so major drainage projects. So Tip do we know exactly how much goes to paving? Well, we split it out as seven yeah. and one fifty, yeah. but you know that's yeah. just. But typically, what happens is you can't. You don't want to pave road unless you do the drainage before you pave it. Correct. Yeah. So we go out, take a look, and then we'll go out, take a look at the basin. So send the basin crew out. You know, a few weeks before, they'll do all their work and then they'll come in. So that's where our smaller crew does their work and we get everything. We did uh, three or four roads up on Stormville Mountain two years ago. Uh, we recently just did uh, some roads in Wikipedia, but there was no storm drainage there. So that wasn't as, as, as uh, cumbersome. Um, so that needs to be looked at. But that's how they do it. So much for the drainage to prepare the road. I had a question, Mark, is do you advise that, uh, I mean, uh, I think that the board should participate in looking or participate in the creation of a budget to really know where we're putting our money. And I, for one, without adding taxes, would like to shift some more money into paving and drainage because we fell behind. But that would be taking and reformulating some, some money that, that is in different departments and putting maybe for the next couple of years toward that department. Well, just to be clear, the, the town board is very integral to the budget process. You know, we pass the, we have an initial budget that gets passed to the town board and you can adjust it at that point any way you like. Having said that, difficult. I do agree that if, if possible, yep. With all due respect, Mark, it's very difficult for any one of the town boards, I, I, I speak for myself, to really know where the costs are once the document is in process and once the document is complete. I know I could come and sit with you and, and I've done that, but I think that in the process of creating a budget, the board should be active, really seeing where the funds are put while we're creating that budget. It will be very, give us everybody some kind of knowledge or uh, if those funds that we're putting in a certain sections I really need it for that time, and maybe we could take some more money and allocate it to the highway department. Councilman, I think we are informed. We absolutely are. We're given the budget, and we go if we have any questions. I know I've met with Mark. I know Pete has met with Mark. Yeah. I, I only speak for myself. Mark. I Please. sit with the supervisor and Mark every year and go through many stages of the budget. Can I ask about the, um, the highway budget? Is the, what has been the average highway budget over the past three to four years? Has it been? Has it been roughly, roughly five and, and a half million. Million. We've had a, an abnormal winter. This was winter. a very severe winter, and so well, we budgeted, I think, seven hundred last year, if I remember right, for salt and something like that. Yeah, right. Correct. So we seven, went. Yeah. We spent almost double, right? We spent significantly more than. Yeah, yeah. And if you remember, I think it's 2012. We had a terrible storm, and we never got any relief. Was that 2010 or 2012? We had a lot of tree damage. And it was very, very localized, just to the town of East Fishkill. Yeah. And we spent eight hundred thousand dollars. Eight eighty. Eight eighty. Yeah, yeah. And so we ended up borrowing that money over a three-year period, and then paying it back. So, uh, yeah, we've had some very, very difficult weather situations the last few years, and the last two winters have been very, very difficult. But we, we, we recognize the need to be building up, and uh, but then you have to plow the roads, you have to make sure that the uh, storm debris is cleaned up. So it's been a, it's been a challenge. Right. One of the biggest things we need, because of the 2% tax cap, in my mind, is to build revenue. You know, between the 2% tax cap, uh, what has happened with the sales taxes and the mortgage taxes, which is basically our revenue, is really made it very challenging. So if we can expand our tax base, that, that takes time, but if we can expand our tax base, we, then we can still work within the 2% tax cap and, and put more funding. And I, I believe that, you know, ob obviously highway is the place that needs to be built up for the road system and, and for, the, for the drainage projects that we have before us. Yeah, if I had to pick one area that's in most need of building up the budget, it would be the highway roads yeah. and paving. I mean, besides the fact of the 2% cap, I mean, the economy has played a big role in creating funds and revenue for the town, so uh, uh, loss of revenue. 
I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The economy has given us less revenue. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we have to deal with what we got. Uh, the only thing that I could say is that reallocating some funds from one sector to another would help. Peter, you're the liaison and, uh, to the, what do you think? I mean. I think we've got to come up with a ballpark idea and five or six year plan and realize that if we set a five year plan up and we get a snow bud or we get hammered like mm -hmm. we did this winter, we're going to take a big cut of it and it's going to put us back a half a year. I mean, you've got to be realistic about it. And I mean, the other department we've taken a lot from over the last couple of years is that police department sooner or later is going to need a new car. I think we're probably a year or two behind in them too. I mean, we have big expenses coming, yeah. so we can't take the cars away or. No, absolutely. There's nowhere you can. I don't think there's any big area that I can go that Mark or any of us can go out and find. Hey, we got an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars sitting over there. Let's put it in blacktop. Yeah. I mean, you got to come up with a game plan, and we got to go from there. I mean, I'll sit with them and say we figure out eight hundred thousand dollars as a number, and then yeah. prioritize the list and start to work our way down through. And stay, you know, you got to try to stay in, but. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there might be a year where we spend a million and a half, and that leaves nothing for the next year. So Mark's got to come up with a creative way to bond it or something to do that. He said the B word. <laughs> he hates the B word. We don't do bond. Well. We don't buy. But if you spend a million and a half one year and you've only got an eight hundred thousand dollar budget, yeah, it's tough. I mean, a few couple of years ago, we uh, we changed insurance companies and and redesigned how we are we do our insurance, and actually we saved what three hundred thousand dollars that year. That was the savings in that year that actually carried forward. So, but it's getting harder and harder to find those kind of savings. Also, I think we've saved by um, subbing out our, co our contracting out our blacktop has has been. I think very efficient use of our resources. So it's tough. It's tough, and and I'm just. Uh, but again, I think we're to the point where we you know we need to build our revenue. So yeah. and that, that's what up, we need. We got to come up with a game plan yeah. for for them, and yeah. also probably for the police department and vehicles. Yeah. yeah and um, rec even probably for. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every equipment. everybody's been tightening their belt. And, yep. You know, uh, John, uh, general question: Do we does the town own uh, property that maybe we could sell and create revenue? We would have to do an inventory of town properties from the assessment roll and see. Obviously, any park land you can't sell. No, no, I'm not talking yeah, no, about the park. I, I understand, and there may be slivers here or there. But Can we look at that and see if we could come up with some money from there? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could take a look at that. What, one, of the, one of the things we've discussed this is one of the things you realize is that your, your normal operating expenses have to be paid by your normal operating revenue. And if you get something like you sell a piece of property, that's fine. And for that one year, yeah. But you, we're getting to a point where it's just, it's been very difficult, but that's really, for long term, that's where you have to be. You have to have your long term, re your, your normal operating revenue paying for your normal operating expenses. That's very helpful if you have, as we've had in the last few years, extraordinary expenses. But um, hopeful, and I've said this to Mark before, we're hopeful the uh, the pension increases will slow down. Maybe they'll flatten out. That will give us a break. And uh, if we have a decent winter, it's not as bad as the last two winters have been. It'll give us a chance to get a little bit ahead. But uh, yeah, it makes it does make budgeting very challenging. But we'll certainly look to see if there's any any properties that we can that we can sell. But this is, a li this is the list for the, uh, the projects that the highway superintendent and town engineer feel need to be done. And uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll put together a budget. We'll put together a priority list, and uh, we'll talk about a budget <coughs> for going forward. Can I ask the town engineer, what is a culvert trash rack? <laughs> Up on uh, Hawks Lane a few years ago, we had that storm. Uh, was it Irene? Irene, yeah. Um, yeah. Hawks Lane was washed out. Uh, debris had got caught in the throat of the culvert. So uh, FEMA uh, replaced the culvert and we had applied to have them install a trash rack in the front of it so that debris could not clog it again. And you know, through the cost benefit analysis, they would not Go pay, for, pay right. for that trash rack. Yeah. So we had done the design for it and submitted it and everything. And you know, you have to cast concrete in place. It's a big, rather big structure. But what it does is, it, you know, it's a, a grating 
that's angled, that debris will kind of wash over it and not get trapped in the throat. So that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. The things you learn. Yeah. So Mark, how long did it take us to get reimbursed by FEMA for Hurricane Irene? Well, we're still not fully reimbursed, uh, exactly. but most of the payments took at least two years. Two years. I, it was just mind-boggling the amount of paperwork. I mean, we had reams of paperwork that we had to submit, unfortunately, over and over and over. But we finally got most of our, most of our uh, costs paid back. So, but boy, that was a chore in itself. Yeah, yeah, dealing with the state Fem and the federal. Femas, they're a little funny that way. Yeah. Anyway, thank goodness we weren't waiting on the money to fix these things. We had the money that we could actually fix them and then get reimbursed. So, All right, well, we'll take a look, and we'll come back with the capital projects budget for the next five or six years. I'd like to be realistic, and we'll see what we can do with a couple of the big ones. I said we do have grant applications out, so we'll see how that goes. Um, number five on the list is the engineer intern at the last, uh, I think it was the last voting meeting. We had a gentleman stand up and he's talking about he's in uh, one of our water systems that is just getting metered. It wasn't metered previously. It's just getting metered. They always paid a, a flat rate. And uh, he wanted to talk about being metered, I guess, for usage. And well, we're getting the meters that. installed, but we're not on a metered usage uh, pay schedule right. yet. We're still on a benefit assessment. And, and there's a process to go through to establish rates. You have to go through all the data, reconcile, make sure through all these manual readings that, you know, the numbers are, are consistent numbers, good numbers. So it's a process and there's a lot of data to go through to come up with a good rate compared to the, our yield at the well source and come up with a rate that's, you know, re what we think reasonably close to covering our expenses. So, you know, we're busy with a lot of projects internally right now. And the thought was if we could bring it and in turn in, good on the computer, good with crunching numbers, because it's a big number crunching exercise, but still being able to look at the numbers and, and realize if they make sense, not just blindly, you know, crunch numbers. So if we could do that, I think that would help get those two projects yeah. up and running. And that was Four Corners, four and, corners and, and Fishco Plains. Fishco yes. Plains, yeah. yeah. So we'd like to bring on an intern to work. And I had, a, I had a local young man about a year and a half ago stop by. He gave me his resume. He's, I forget where he lives, over um, off of Blue Hill, over that area. Um, graduated college, looking for a job. And uh, he had done modeling, some sort of computer yes. modeling and stuff like that. So uh, I just kept his resume for a while. And I called the other day. He did stop in. He met with Scott and myself. And he seems like he can do it. I mean, we certainly can put an ad out there, but we do have one person that's interested, and we do, do, do think he's qualified. What do we pay an intern? I forget. What is an intern rate? Ten fifty. We had an intern 11. a few years back. Yeah. At yeah. the time, it was ten or 10, eleven, 10, something. Yeah, like that. something like that. I, what do we? What do? We, um, we'll have to take a look at the rate, but that's about the ballpark what the rate would be for for that type of a position. Yeah, I mean, we could set it just something above minimum wage and. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to go through all sorts of processes to get it approved as a at a lower rate unpaid intern, you know, right? Or yeah. so. Okay. So. And being as you'd be working uh, on water issues, uh, calculating, taking look at the water um, usages and stuff like that, that would actually be billed to the water uh, to the water districts, I believe. Correct. Yeah, we would uh, allocate any of his expenses, as long as he's working on water and sewer projects to the water and sewer districts. Okay, which is typically what we do anyway that with any special a special district, water or sewer district, we always allocate the expenses from that district uh, to that district. So those people are always paying for that. And I, I think we did talk about we might even realize the savings if we go through these districts and find some inefficiencies or something being missed. So it could be a very good exercise. Anyway. How long are we thinking that we'll need to enter? Well, there's two ways we can look at it. Just to do the rates themselves could take, you know, three or four weeks, I think. Uh, and, if, and if it wraps up early, I'd like to really go back and audit all the systems. You know, we don't do that frequently so we're enough. Like, to, we're well, just we, thinking for a month or two? Is that well, close? either we could do just the rates, or if it's a summer intern, it mm -hmm. could be for the summer. There's, there's enough things to go back and trend and review in you know, all our water and sewer systems, our sludge hauling, electricity usage. You know, we really don't trend those so, items. So the maximum is, say, two months? Summer, yeah. yeah. You think that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. On the long side, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Anybody, anybody have any questions on that concept? I think it'd be good. We'll put something on channel 22 and see if anybody would be interested. And I would like to have the board interview the young man that sent in his resume and uh, we would just see what we can do. Like to have an engineering background, environmental science, engineering yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put something on and we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. All right. If everybody's okay with that, that's it for tonight for the discussion portion of the meeting. Uh, liaison reports um, for myself under the police. I know the police have been, hasn't been outrageously busy, nothing really going on. They, they, they seem to keep themselves quite, quite occupied, but uh, there's nothing major to, uh, to report. We have been talking about the vehicles that you bring up, Peter. Uh, some of our vehicles are getting a little old. We do have two cars coming in to replace the ones, but as you said, we just got, got to keep moving on, you know, replacing the vehicles. But otherwise, everything is going well with the police department. Um, Peter, highway, anything else on highway besides the sweeping? Uh, yeah, a couple things. Um, they've been filling potholes. Believe it or not, we had some of those come up this year. Uh, repairing the old catch basins. That winter's been tough on those two. Uh, they're cutting some trees along the town roads, working on drainage on Long Hill, and still the sweeping again. Um, and then two other things I'd like to thank the uh, police department and all of the fire departments for their assistance in the funeral this past Good. week for the firemen from Poughkeepsie that passed away. Mm -hmm. Good. And these fish gills stepped up 100% in both departments. Yeah, it's Tim Gunther, the Tim city Gunther. of Poughkeepsie uh, fireman that passed away out in the line of duty. Yes. I was going to be Our a, resident. A crowd. Yeah. And a resident. He's Our resident, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought he was Beekman. Was he our no, resident? Yeah, he's Fishkill. Oh, Beekman Road. Okay. Oh, Beekman, Beekman Road. Road. Okay. He's Fishkill resident. Okay. Could, could I just comment on something? In, uh, the councilman uh, mentioned that the highway is cutting trees along the town right away. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, it's good if the citizens know that if they see a tree that's in a diseased or broken condition along the town right away, yeah. uh, to please report that. Because, oh, absolutely. Um, we did get the grant, fortunately, for the tree survey, mm -hmm. and that's going to help us because the town board will recall about three years ago, uh, there was an, a tree came down on Shenandoah Road, which wasn't even on wasn't town hard. right of way. Yeah. But under the new case law in New York State, uh, if, if there is any reason to believe that a municipality knows of a tree, even if it's adjoining the right of way, and it falls, and it can hurt somebody on a public roadway, the town is liable. Mm -hmm. So part of the way to protect ourselves is what you've initiated, yeah. Supervisor, with that uh, tree survey and review, which is part of what the courts say if the town can show they've taken reasonable steps to uh, ascertain what trees are diseased and danger of falling, uh, and you set up that program, then you protect the taxpayers because obviously a $750,000 insurance claim is very hurtful. Yeah. So I think that combined with making the public aware that they should report yeah. any trees that look like they're in danger of uh, falling on a town road, uh, it's very important to us to do that. So hopefully when the uh, tree report comes mm -hmm. back um, with the DC uh, uh, grant money, that we'll be able to then give that to the highway superintendent and have a record of the steps that we've been taking to make the roads safe for the public but also to protect the public's uh, exposure and liability. Yeah, absolutely. That was kind of a surprise that the, uh, that the court ruled $750,000 for that incident. It's because it used to be that towns were immune from liability, um, but now that's eroded and it's become very prevalent in yeah. Long Island, Westchester, uh, and the Court of Appeals has upheld it so that the way to start to protect ourselves is to take the steps like mm -hmm. the, the tree survey yeah. and things yeah. like that. And I think the tree survey is not like a one-year project. I know the DC uh, has be ongoing. Has this grant program, so I'm thinking every year we need to take advantage of this grant program. Also, another part of it should be, you know, having a highway crew trained and things of this nature, which really will protect us. And, from, and also, from that. the survey will include yeah. our parks because, yes. God forbid, somebody's walking on one of our trails in a park. Yes and there's a tree that's diseased. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we had knowledge of it, we should take yeah, care of absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? I just asked uh, the, the, the ground supervisor to look at one the other day right. because we always have to be cognizant. <laughs> These are public areas. It has to be safe for the public. So great. Thank you for that. 
Um, liaison reports, uh, please, we're good. Peter, highway, we're doing well with highway. And hopefully, well done. Hopefully they'll do the, the, other, <laughs> the, the, other, the other one quarter of the town and get that done, taken care of. Uh, Councilman D'Alessandro, uh, uh, planning board, yep, zoning planning board. And zoning, getting busy. Zoning this month, very busy. Um, but uh, at the end of last year, we did some uh, secret training for our board members, and now we're currently looking for more continuing education yeah. for them. So we'll oh, be I looking think, into that. Yeah, I think that's very important. That was a good class, too, yeah. for our zoning and our planning board. Yeah, it was excellent. Yeah. And that's um, 700,000. It would be a lot of drainage projects. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Um, as, as along that note, too, we met with the ARB. I know the board had indicated uh, a desire to meet with our boards. We met with the ARB last week or last month. They did not have a chance to have scheduled board for this meeting. Uh, I believe in June we'll be meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. After that, I'll try to schedule with the um, CAC board. and the Planning Board, and then sometime we can have. Actually, we should have. Also, I think Tom, we talked about having uh, secret with the Zoning Board and the Planning Board because sometimes. Their, their administration overlaps, their, their responsibilities overlap. So we have to have a meeting with those two boards sometime during the summer. So uh, very good. And, and I, I thank our planner and our attorney for the training that they provide to our boards. They do a very good very job. Good. All righty. Uh, Councilman Franco, recreation. How's our recreation doing? Very busy. I have a lot more. Wow. Um, well, over the past year and a half or so, um, overseeing the advisory board, or being their liaison, um, I had asked them to give me a prioritized list of all the projects that they had. And after reviewing them, um, they came up with uh, the McGrath Field parking area, which they put number one on mm -hmm. their list. Uh, Scott gave us an estimate, and um, after a little hemming and hawing back and forth, they decided to go forth with the, uh, the McGrath Field and I believe with the community center and uh, the satellite with paving and lighting. And Scott, if you can talk a little bit about it. I well, know the, if, um, if I may just make sure. one point, Tom, well, you know, we were talking about, we were talking about um, paving projects. We we're talking about paving Lake Walton Road. We we're talking about milling the four feet on each side down Lake Walton from one end to the other. That's going to create a lot of milling. How many tons did you say, Scott? Uh, we estimate about 2,300 tons. 2,300 ton. So what are we going to do with 2,300 ton of milling? Um, we might actually put it down for a base over in the McGrath parking lot. I mean, I think milling makes a good base, doesn't it? Well, it would be even more than just a base. I mean, it would keep the dust down, and it might be an alternative to try to, you know, and save, keep save the cost some money down. over there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that would be great. Yeah. So it saves us from having to get rid of 2,300 ton, 3, ton of millings over there, and we can use it over here. So I think that's a very good thing. We're talking we have to work the timing out. That's what yeah. we're working towards. Yeah. And I think we're going to talk about that shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, that's good. as long as it's prioritized and we have that. Yes. That's and, on our and I'm glad you brought that up because what we're talking about at the voting meeting next uh, in a couple of weeks, what we'd like to do is authorize bids for uh, the paving projects because we, did not, we not, did not get a paving contractor this year. So we put out bid for paving contractors with roads being Lake Walton being one of them. Mm -hmm. And also then we'd also need to put out a contract for the lighting and the drainage over there. So these are two projects hopefully we'll be able to authorize the bids for at the voting meeting in, at the end of this month. Okay, very good. Thank so you. I, and, but that kind of dovetails with what we're no, going to be doing. No, that'll work out perfectly if we can save some money over there. That would be great and be able to, uh, to complete a project. Cause that's, yes. That's what I would like to see. Yeah. There. So, um, I discussed at the last workshop the, uh, the possibility of a partnership with the East Fishkill Soccer Club and the Tottenham Hotspurs, uh, which is a premier league in, from based out of London. Uh, the representatives were here in East Fishkill last week, and I had the opportunity to meet uh, Grant Cornwell and Andy Rogers from the Spurs. And uh, myself and some of the coaches and parents, we expressed some of our concerns. And um, one of them that I was con very concerned about was that if, if the soccer club would undertake um, the, uh, the Spurs, that this would be primarily something for the travel kids, that they would benefit the most. And uh, Mr. Cornwell and Mr. Rogers actually explained that it would be the opposite, that the rec kids would actually benefit even more, particularly the ones who are just starting off, the five and six-year-olds, because they'll be going through their program throughout their entire up to 19. So you'll just see this wave of talent come mm -hmm. through, which is, um, 
which, which really eased a lot of our concerns, especially the coaches. Um, Tom, if I may, the Tottenham sure. Hotspurs, this is a British professional it's soccer It's a Premier team. League. It's one, they're looking for 10, uh, ten super towns. Clubs. Super clubs. Yeah. In, the United, in North America, wow. not just the United States. Uh, they have two currently, uh, one in Florida, one in California. Uh, they also deal with, um, with the town. They don't necessarily just wait for the clubs to ask them to join. They have to approve it as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that they did, they were, uh, they went to our complex, the Route 52 uh, soccer complex, and they uh, they went to go see a bunch of games. They talked to coaches, they talked to players, they talked to referees and parents, and they really focused on the kids, on the little kids, to see how they were doing. And they focused on the parents to see how they were reacting. And the coaches, the deal that they had with New Jersey fell through, not because of New Jersey, or I'm sorry, not because of Tottenham, but because of the way the parents and the coaches were in New Jersey. It wasn't conducive to what they're trying to teach. Hmm. So from what I understand, uh, they were here. Uh, we met with them. They met with some of the, the families and the, and the soccer people, and everything went very, very well. So we're very hopeful for that. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, uh, you have a child in soccer, you can have them talk, or the parents should talk to their child's soccer coach for more info. They could also uh, go to the East Fishkill Soccer Club website, which is www.efsc.net slash Tottenham dash, or I'm sorry, slash info. Uh, the other thing I have is from baseball. This past week, we did something really fun. Uh, Mike Miner and myself were able to, uh, well, I should say Mike Miner mainly, we recorded a Little League baseball game. And uh, we yeah. put it on Channel 22. Saw also that. on YouTube. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Mike did a tremendous job. A lot of his own equipment he used. So we thank him for that. He had three cameras set up. It was done very professionally, other than the announcer, play-by-play, you know, <laughs> play, which is very difficult. But uh, in case you're wondering, the East Fishkill Phillies beat the East Fishkill Pirates 7-5. Oh, so 7-5. Was, uh, was The kids game. were great. We had a player of the game at the end. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of positive support with that. Wow. And uh, I have one other question for our town attorney. Um, we had talked about signs and ads on the ball fields. Could you explain how we can do something like that where we can get that money for ads and turn it back into the fields? Well, I, I've gone through this before, so I'm familiar with it. Um, what happens is the town board is obviously the custodians of the parks. And if you authorize a signage that a merchant might have an ad for, et cetera, you can do that. The revenue must go into the town coffers and then can be allocated by the town board for recreational to offset. Uh, so that if you were going to do that, you would have to establish a policy as to the placement of the signs, the size of the signs, the duration, and then there would be an agreement with whoever's going to sponsor it as to the term. Uh, and then that revenue comes into the general fund, and then the town board can appropriate it to recreation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we can. Use and there that. is a state controls opinion on that, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be good if we could alleviate some of the uh, the cost for the fields. Yeah. Oh, they absolutely. Do, they need need to be maintained. Yeah. Yeah. Most towns do it like the scoreboards or things like that. They'll have a little advertiser on it, and somebody will sponsor it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Good. Oh, that'd be a great idea. That'd be very good. Anything else, uh, Councilman? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Since it was Count recreation, could I just ask, are all the scoreboards working? No. no. We have two scoreboards that are not working, and there's a discrepancy as to who uh, is to maintain them. There was a, a policy where baseball was going to maintain the scoreboards. We're working on that. We're going to get that fixed, so all the scoreboards will be operational. All right, great. Thank you. Now, let me You're ask welcome. a question on scoreboards. <clears throat> Don't we own them? Um, I believe they were purchased, from what I understand, talking to members of the um, of the Rec Advisory Board yeah. and um, uh, Steve, yeah. that they were purchased by uh, by baseball. Oh, back okay, in the day. okay. All right, well, let's see if we can get them operational. Yes, I think that would be we're working on that. Very good. Very Two good. I know that are not working. We'll get them working. Okay, good. Good. Plug it in. I think it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Councilman Marinero. Uh, Hillside Lake Special Park District or Spark Park Districts? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, there was uh, some positive comments about the last repairs uh, done at the catch basin 
by uh, Sunny Duck. It seems that, at least at this time, that uh, it's going to be working pretty well. Um, we're still waiting, I don't know if it came out as of right now, for the air infrared uh, red scanning, uh, the results. I don't know if we anticipate we or if we should be getting that. I believe we've gotten some rough data. We need to map it out. Yeah. Okay. They, they and uh, well, the it sent it to you in an email file, and it's a big thing. We had uh, a good discussion at the May seventh meeting between the East Fishkill Town Board members and the Hillside Lake Board. One point of agreement among all attending was that uh, they were all in agreement in uh, the solving the Elsa Lake Park District. Mm -hmm. no, no, I, I didn't, don't think we were I all in agree agreement with that. that. thought we were pretty keen on the uh, on the recreation aspect, though, but I don't believe we were, we were not in agreement. agreement. No, I said, uh, personally, I said I wanted more information from the residents of Hillside Lake and the residents of East Fishkill. I was very clear that mm -hmm. I said that. You were. Right. We had asked that at the time that uh, the town lawyer was going to give us some information. And he was going to get us the information. Yeah, but I wasn't, in, I wasn't in agreement yeah. to, to dissolve the park district. Okay, so you don't agree to dissolve the park district? Unless, until I get more information from people from Hillside Lake to see their feelings and more people from How the town. How are you going to get that information then? I'm going to talk to people in the town, talk to people in, in Hillside Lake. <laughs> and when do we expect to have some kind of response so that the people, well, the board could have some kind of idea when we could start this process rolling? Well, I, I'm sure we're waiting to see what the timetable is. The attorney is going to get back to us on. And that's what I was going at okay. before you interrupted me, that we're going to see if the town lawyer could give us the information or how to start the process. Well, I think councilman is just correcting no, you, I, and I and I agree with the councilman. I didn't agree with the dissolution; it was put on the table. But I think we need more information, also. I know you said uh, the last meeting or two that you wanted to make it a priority, but I still think we need the information. Okay. So I guess I was under the impression that we kind of agreed that night that we were going to ask the town lawyer to give us the information to open up a discussion now to dissolve the park district. If did, if did, and, Is and that the, the understanding that we had? Yeah. That, and the, you have to look at the ramifications of just dissolution of the, of the district and, you know, what comes over to the town with the expenses that the town are and all that. It's, I think it's something that needs to be looked at. So as of right now, where do we stand in that process as a board? I've been Pushing. instructed to, yeah. to do that report. I'm working on it. Uh, it'd be probably a couple of weeks, and I'll give you all a very detailed report with some backup opinions, et cetera. Because I did express an opinion in the past as to about the process, but it was questioned. So if I'm going to express an, the opinion again, I'll give some backup materials so that everyone satisfies themselves. Okay. So once we have the town lawyer's response, I guess we could have another discussion, maybe? Or? Mm -hmm how everybody stands. Nick could do his investigation and uh, well, I think we should all do our due assessment. diligence. Yeah. And uh, the last comment I want to make is that uh, to the community of East Fishkill, that this uh, May 19th, Tuesday, next Tuesday, there is a local uh, school board election. I would advise everybody in the town of East Fishkill to review the candidates and uh, make sure that whoever stands for lowering the school taxes uh, gets uh, the proper vote because our taxes in this community are extremely high. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, Councilman. I got one thing we forgot. Uh, brush drop off. It's that time of year. Opening day, May 13th, Wednesday through Friday, 9 to 4 p.m., Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, prices are vehicle size from car to small six wheel dump free. Vehicles larger than six wheels, $15 per load and require a ticket. Tickets can be purchased at the town's clerk's office. Proof of residency is required. Commercial vehicle tickets limited to two per week. And a record of all vehicles will be kept and proof of residency will be checked by the gate attendant. Uh, it's right across the street here. Yep. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. A lot of people have been asking about the sweeping and the brush drop off. They're the two big issues uh, these days. So uh, 
I think we've addressed them. Hopefully the sweeping will be done soon. And brush drop off opened up, I believe, today, correct? Or yesterday? 13th, yesterday. Yesterday. So very good. All right. With that, that's the end of our work session. Next town board meeting will be on May 28th. And thank everybody for attending.